Hey guys, welcome back. ATN booth, couldn't miss that obviously, SHOT SHOT 2022. Uh, with us, Steve Lemonoff. Great to have Director you of back. Marketing. Yes, thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you. Um, so pretty excited to see what's coming new from ATN. I s took a brief look around already. Right. Um, but the big news is the Odin? Yeah, the Odin LT. It's a new offering from ATN. Very excited about this product. It's about the same size as the PVS-14, about the same weight. It actually comes with a smaller right. magazine for a, a single-use CR123 battery, which should give you about two and a half, three hours. With this optional uh, battery, you get about five hours of continuous runtime. You could have extra ones and you could swap it in, swap it out for juice. If you have a helmet, like Team ND, Opscore, whatever, uh, you can mount it on your helmet or headgear. You could have an auxiliary battery bank and you could connect it to USB-C and have continuous power beyond the five hours. So if you're in the like, longer engagements or longer hunts, you won't run out of juice basically right. in the field. Right. Uh, we're gonna ha we have um, several uh, configurations in this. So right now we, ha we are shipping already the Odin LT320 to 4012 Micron, okay. which is available. We have three versions, a 19 millimeter, 25 and 35 millimeter, and your uh, optical magnification will vary depending on the lens. Okay. In about four months, we will have a 640-480 version as well with a 1X Unity, which you can actually use it to walk around. Right. In the current configuration of a 320, it's it's really optimal for observation because the minimum magnification is going to be a 2X, okay. and it goes above that. Right, right. So with a 2X, it's not as comfortable to walk around. You may stumble because things will be closer than they appear. But that's why the 640 will be so you know key because it will offer the 1x magnification and a lot of people i know in the industry are looking forward to that because they want to have a small thermal monocular they could safely walk around in the environment and not stumble and right. use it for scouting uh for uh, tracking for you know game retrieval and have thermal capability the 320 uh will start at um price point at 12.99 which is uh, about half the cost of a traditional PVS 14 Gen 3, which is for a thermal monocular, is an extremely val you know, great value. Right. Do you guys have any plans to have the 320 with a smaller magnification or not? Because of the sensor and lens okay. configuration, oh, okay. it doesn't, the math okay. doesn't con uh, equate. That's why the 640 will, will have it, because okay. the way the sensor and the lenses are configured, that, that dictates the optical magnification. So I think the helmet mounted or really for navigating at night maybe even the UTV or something I think it's really yeah. interesting um, what is that 640 price point I don't have that pricing yet but we'll, we'll sh okay. have it shortly okay. yeah it's very interesting uh, I haven't actually dealt with a he helmet mounted unit yet yeah. but um, it would be a, a different interesting to test out uh, you could turn it on it's, it's functioning you know since we're shipping them already to public you know you give your honest opinion on That's a 320, right? Yeah. Yeah, I could see that uh, being really useful, especially that uh, it's lightweight, right? So it doesn't add a lot of weight uh, to your setup. Right. Um, so I would, I'll be looking forward to the 640 unit, probably in the 1X magnification. Uh, I do have a windshield with my UTV, but that might be something where you could consider one which flips down or something so you can navigate around. Right. And our. Um, yeah, just an, an open field scenarios and, you know, Shane and the crew from Rugaru, right. they do the same thing, but in the in the open field setups, uh, going out in the field, um, having to, to find or locate your, you know, feral hawks or whatever, I think would be, would be extremely uh, useful. Otherwise, you're always like picking up your rifle, yeah. walk a little bit, picking up the rifle. Which is not really safe. Yeah. I mean, you guys made huge improvements with the OTS 4T. Like I switched from OTS HD to the 4T and to me, um, Honest opinion, it has been a game changer. Okay. The HD was was a good device. Basically, it's the old Thor HD as a as a handheld, but you had to fiddle with batteries. Um, if if you had an HD unit, you might be familiar with the Cantley batteries. Yeah. Uh, they can go bad. The, the the little circuit boards on there and stuff can break. So it's been a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. But now going to the 4T, like battery it's has not an issue. It's not an option. Uh, not not in concern. Not an yeah. Issue, right. You just you forget about it basically. Yeah. And, and we're, we're, we're very proud to be an industry leader in the battery management power. Yeah, yeah, yeah you guys are. Like, I know that uh, other, other manufacturers and other competitors, they still have issues in the 
battery consumption or battery life, right? right? Uh, power consumption. And um, so the 4T, to, to me, it's like truly a, a thing I just have sitting in my truck. Right? Right. I, I can rely on it, uh, I can just pull it out, scan real quick, see what's, what's coming around. So uh, yeah, really happy with that. So that, that is just an addition to that same right. lineup and battery life and uh, just reliability in general. So yeah. very cool. Fantastic. Let's talk so, about the other one. Yeah, let's do that. So this is a new offering. It's actually a new category for us for 2022. We have them available ready to ship as well. So we're moving away from the concept of releasing and then having people wait six months before we can start shipping. Now when we release, we have it in stock and we're ready to ship to customers because customers don't want to wait six months. They, if they like it, if they see value in it, they, they want to acquire it right away. So we want to make our customers happy. We, you know, we listen to our customers and that's what we're doing nowadays. So this is the X-Sound and it's hearing protection, which is a very important when you're you know, in the shooting sports. Um, they're similar to uh, like Peltor's Howard Lights 3M, you know, I'm sure people are familiar with uh, head protection. They're very li light, ergonomic. Uh, the cool thing about them is um, battery life is uh, very good. It's about 300 hours on two okay. AAAs. Uh, it has uh, Bluetooth 5.0. You could pair it to your cell phone or media player. You could listen to music, answer calls. Uh, you have omnidirectional microphone, which uh, allows you to hear your surroundings, uh, range instructions, uh, in, in the field hunting, uh, very very clear, very sensitive, has a great uh, decibel reduction of uh, 22 NNR. Uh, also, you have a really cool feature where the, you have separate controls for your omnidirectional mic and your media. So you can listen to audiobooks while you're hunting or your music from your cell phone or whatever and still be safe and uh, protect your ears and have the sensitivity you need to hear things around as well. Interesting. Yeah, I think it's the first time I'm seeing that uh, individual volume control for that. It's very cool. And price point is $119 only. Okay. ATN X Sound, hearing protection. Uh, what I find unique is really the individual volume control for ambient sound and then any, any streaming uh, from any device via Bluetooth. So very cool. Awesome, thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, Steve, I appreciate it, as Absolutely. usual. Uh, very exciting. Uh, one thing, though, you mentioned uh, you try, guys are trying to release products closer to actual product, or announce products closer to product release. Right. I know that, and I'm still getting comments today on that video from Tyco? 2020 to Tyco. Yes. Uh, due to chip shortages, uh, we had to delay, because uh, a lot of we have a lot of product, and some of them use the same um, components and chipsets, we were forced to delay the product because of shortages. Plus, we went back, reevaluated the product, and we felt that we needed to make certain adjustments, improvements, so we needed to delay it. I know we announced it, yeah, yeah. we still plan to launch it. You didn't see the COVID chip shortage coming, I guess? <laughs> well, there was, there no. was, Shot Show was in January 2020. You could, I know. You could have not known that. Yeah, I don't so have a crystal ball on. That was a joke, I, Steve. I, I'd be retired by now. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we tried our best to mitigate uh, yeah. those type, types of things. We do have a great supply chain, but sometimes things are out of control of manufacturers, you, Ford, GM, everybody, you know, it, it's hard to get things, uh, electronics right now, especially chips. So, you know, we're working hard with our suppliers and, you know, we will release it. Uh, as soon as possible. Okay. So there's your answer, Taiko T. Uh, delayed because of chip shortage. Uh, you can thank COVID for that and uh, all kinds of different entities who are responsible for reacting to the pandemic. Um, one thing uh, I did here, and I haven't made it yet because I'm in Austin and sure. Austin, Dallas. You guys have a store in Dallas, right? We have a it's store a in Dallas. Four hour will, trip for me, so I haven't been up there yet. We'll actually have a store in Austin also. Oh, well, there you go. So some uh, later on this year, we are opening another store in Houston awesome. and another one in Austin. Awesome. So we will have three retail locations in uh, Texas. Uh, because uh, we value Texas. Because it's the greatest state it, in the it, United States. Yeah, Texas is a wonderful state and we love Texas and we love the people of Texas. And um, we, customers will be able to see our full assortment in the stores. The Dallas store has been great. Uh, it's our model store and it's doing fantastically. And you know, it's 
all in due part the support of the local community and the hunters and you know they are love the ability to go to the store look at the product um, see what they like and you know go home with it Excellent. that's fantastic I, I talk to a lot of folks and I run into folks randomly uh, and they see some stickers in the truck and like hey do you sell optics so I have some of these conversations and now being able to say hey there's an Austin store you guys can go to for ATN and, and look at your device like physically in person it's fantastic so yeah. uh, pretty cool pretty excited about swinging by the Austin store yeah uh, that being the closest for us so it'll be fantastic yeah and also this year we received the NRA Golden Bullseye Award for our Thor 4 uh, for 2022, American Hunt Hunting Optic of the Year. We're very proud of that uh, accomplishment. It's uh, not easy to get. And uh, the, the editors, uh, I send them product. They used it in the field. They played with it. They put it through their tests and their ringer. And they saw tremendous value, um, quality features, um, the capabilities of the product and they awarded us for this year so we're very proud of that accomplishment. Awesome. Yeah, the Thor 4 has been just huge. Huge improvement from where you guys are coming from the Thor HD yeah. and even the, the x uh 2 yeah. to the x 4K, 4K, you know. Yeah. Uh, my son just took his first year oh, on uh, Sunday with the x 4K. And he recorded, I hope, right? Yeah, uh, we recorded. Yep. Fantastic. So, yeah. Memory for a lifetime. It is. No, it was, uh, it was great. So. Yeah. Alright. Uh, thank you, Steve. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Uh, awesome. Looking forward to what's you know coming in Austin and the, the maybe later half of the year, or something like that. And then uh, the uh, Odin, uh, I think, is something I'm gonna get my hands on at some point. So, Absolutely. very interesting. All right, thank you, guys. Uh, that's it from the ATN booth for now. Uh, it's been a great experience and uh, fun looking at new devices. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. And if you guys have any questions, post in the comments below. Hey guys, we're at the Pulsar booth and with me is Chase. Uh, he's going to run us through some of the new units for 2022, yeah, right? Sure. From Pulsar perspective. Uh, Pulsar also has cop figure and I just recently got those uh, two tripods. I got the, the clamp and I also have the Picatinny rail. Yeah, good. So good. I'm pretty happy with that. Good deal. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the new Pulsar thermos. Um, I guess you guys also obviously have the IR night vision, so anything yeah, you guys sure. have new there would be pretty, pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, and we've got some in uh, one of the digital units, so we can probably actually start there on the Pulsar. Right. Um, so right this way is, uh, so this is the new okay. Digix, yeah, C50. So this is basically Pulsars, all their digital night vision in the past have been a black and white screen. So this is their first full color HD screen. Um, so basically what it is, it can be used fully during the day, obviously all the full functionality of trails, Helions, LRFs, um, record. The big thing about this one, it's an industry first to have a twilight mode. Mm -hmm. And what that does is like a good daytime glass scope and the 30 minutes before sunup, 30 minutes after sundown and legal shooting hours, this will actually change the frame rate per second and the sensitivity and it'll gather wow. more full color light like a good daytime scope. Yeah. That is extremely timely. Yeah. Because my, my son, my oldest, just shot his first year on January 16th, which oh, was nice. legally the last day of youth hunting season in, in, uh, in Texas. Sure. And uh, we had the issue, it was just as twilight, it was still legal shooting hours. Yep. And uh, we were trying to get an image. And daytime, well, I was using a competitor scope, but daytime didn't uh, give us good results. Switching over to nighttime was just totally washed out. Sure. I had to take the infrared uh, torch at that point, trying to figure out like yep. to get a image. Sure. And um, he, he basically, he's eight, so yeah. he like, you know, ran me through like a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, like uh, yeah. holding it manually, you know. Yeah, he yeah. made that shot and he, he put the dough on the ground. So nice. like that was, and he hit the heart too. Like couldn't be prouder, yeah. proud dad moment for yeah. sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's interesting that you say that because I haven't, I haven't actually experienced it before. Like, I guess I just haven't been in that particular time frame, uh, yeah, time yeah, period yeah. hunting. So yeah, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, so that'll be the first to do it, which is kind of like how the Swarovskis and Zeisses and those guys made their names just having really good glass, gather more light than the human eye right. in those sundown, sunset hours. So that'll be cool. They'll all come with a built-in 850 IR illuminator. Mm -hmm. So if they've used it during the day and then that night they want to go out for predators, 
uh, they just slap that on and mounts to a 30 mil tube and they're ready to go. So kind of a day night system all in one. Um, and so, zoom factor wise on those? Uh, I believe that's a base of 3.5, okay. yeah, base X magnification. Okay. So now we've got that. And then in terms of the first new thermals, uh, here is the new, this is the new Talion. So this is the XQ38s. Um, so this is a completely new platform. Um, for Pulsar, um, this takes, uh, if anybody's familiar with the Axion handhelds, um, the cool new thing about this, it takes that same battery called an APS-5. So that's one APS-5 rechargeable, and this will get you seven to eight hours, depending if you're using recording, Wi-Fi, and all that stuff. So one, you just close it like that, and then uh, lock it in place, and you're So I'm not go. super familiar with the, uh, the Pulsar model names, I guess. Uh, whenever it says 38, is that a 384 sensor? Uh, no, so anything you'll see. So we have XQs, XPs, XMs. That's the sensor designation. Okay. And then the number, you in the past, that always corresponded to the focal length. Okay. Okay, so in the past, everything that was 50 millimeter XQ or XP or 38 for XQ or XPs was a 1.2 ratio. That was the focal length, but the lens size was actually smaller. Okay. Now they're moving to where on most units, a 38 and a 50 are both the lens size. They get larger lenses and the focal length. Okay. So this one will still be a 1.2 ratio. So a 38 is going to be around a 32 millimeter lens, okay. but full functionality. This will be the price opener at 2499 manual focus so no fixed focus like we had in the xm30s okay yeah. so and uh so sensor size in this one uh this is a 384 by 288 yeah yeah so that'll be the first one um we're hoping to if we're lucky we'll start to get these in march but most likely we're telling people april to be safe yeah so um so that was one there in the rifle scopes and then of course uh we've got the completely new uh thermion 2 uh, XP50 LRF. So a lot of guys are familiar with the XP50 uh, Thermion platform. That's kind of been our best image, top of the line, 640, 17 micron, but they use a sub uh, 25 millikelvin sensor. So, and these are now fit, true 50 millimeters. And this is the first time they've put an LRF module in the Thermion body. The Therm Thermion 2, um, can you get that without the LRF or is it always? Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, so we've got the, and, uh, so basically, anybody that's familiar with the Thermion XP50 or Thermion XQ38, Thermion XQ50, same model, just without the LRF module. Okay. Yeah, so this is the first one to actually get it built into the platform. Um, and then this is actually uh, two of our new attachments we're introducing this year as well. Um, so a lot of people have been familiar with these because they've been produced in Europe for about three or four months. Uh, so that's the Krypton. So that's an FXG50. This uses our 640 12 micron, uh, the sensor from BAE. So this one will uh, be the 640 platform. The Proton will be a fixed focus, so no manual focus here, but it's a 30 millimeter. Um, this will be for more one to fours, one to sixes, one to eights. Um, a good addition for guys' buddy guns that they want to buy for a second shooter that, that goes with them. Um, but the good thing about these is though all, both the Krypton and the Proton will come in a hard case. So in this hard case, you'll get this weaver rail mount that you see here for guys that are using an AR platform. And then if guys want to, as you'll see mounted there on that rifle, there will be two daytime rifle scope attachments and they'll cover anything from 40 to 56 millimeter. Um, so if a guy's using a bolt action platform, he can go that route. But this way you buy a Krypton or a Proton and you get home, no matter what platform you're at, you're ready to mount it and go. Yeah, without having to buy any parts. I do have a scout rifle, it's a Steyr uh, scout. <laughs> originally from the Counter-Strike game back yeah. in the days. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's an interesting, because it's interesting rifle because it's a scout design, yeah. Kevin Cooper, whatever, sure. um, and has a Burris 2x8 on it, which is set forward for the long eye relief. Right. Right. I'd love to get um, uh, a thermal unit in front of it at some point. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. But it sounds like you said those are basically, uh, the, it's the Proton? Yeah, so the Proton will be the... And 1X? Uh, yes, yes. So 384 by 288 um, and then this one will retail the full kit with all three attachments for $32.99 in the U.S. Uh, and then the Krypton with the full kit will be $52.99. Okay. Uh, sensors, sensor difference, and you might have said that, and I might have missed it, but uh, Proton versus Yeah, Krypton. so 3D4 by 288, 17 micron, um, 640 by 480, 12 micron. Yeah, yeah. 
Sure. Cool. And the availability? Uh, so these will actually begin shipping in February, um, for, mid February. to late February. Yeah. So we've actually begin um, stockpiling the units. Now we're just waiting on some of the rail pieces and the actual hard cases themselves. So COVID put a little dent in those. Because my accent sounds funny and you probably could have told, uh, told but I'm originally from Germany. So a lot of, actually I have quite a few German folks watching our stuff. Um, can you say anything in terms of how they're being used in Europe, Germany, European market or? Yeah, like so so there's they're a lot more popular in Europe some of those it's legal reasons so like in germany you can't use a fully integrated thermal scope so obviously their only outlet is attachments um, but it's also a little bit of just the cultural differences of hunting um, here you know obviously we don't have restrictions on the number of rifles you can own the different types of platforms so in us it just seems to be a little more common to i'll buy an integrated scope because i can put it on one of my 10 rifles in Europe, a lot of guys are using, you know, Blazer R8s, the most popular, which is a four to five thousand euro rifle. They'll put a high-end Swarovski, Schmidt & Bender, Zeiss, one of those high-end optics companies, um, and they just want to have one platform they don't touch. They use it for roe deer. They use it for wild boar. Yeah. Uh, so they're just, with their limited in the number of platforms they can have, they just prefer to just slap an attachment yeah. on. It. Yeah, I'm aware of the traditional differences they have. It's yeah. basically, yeah. it's like. It's split, right? You have, on the one side, you have the traditional hunters and they don't want to touch something like that. They'd rather shoot in the moonlight and, yeah. you know, for some reason, apparently that's better. Yeah. Um, and then the other side, one those those folks call the other folks Lodenjockel, if you haven't noticed. But they're called Lodenjockel. It's basically the, the original old-fashioned hunters and, you know, whatever. Sure. And then the, the other side really is more modern and, they're, you know, more open to, to new technology. Yeah. And if you think about it, like, I had this one instance, um, uh, we were hunting a uh, wheat field in, in Texas, and uh, it's a wheat field, the first time we saw like 200 hogs in one night in it, like it was a huge population of feral hogs. And at some point we see this random truck in the middle of the field, I'm like, what is that, who is that? Turns out some, some guy who helps the farmer harvest or whatever, but he's out there, he had his fair share of beers, and then he's sitting in the back of the truck uh, with a regular scope, it's just full, full moon, and, and he's trying to shoot Frail hogs up to 600 yards. Really? Like, it doesn't sound very safe, yeah. you know. And it's the yeah, same thing in Germany. Like, look, I get it. I mean, you know, Germany has a lot of history. Right? This this country here is very young. Yeah. Like, you know, very young. Compare the city I grew up in, um, or let's say Munich. I spent eight years in Munich. Munich is like, I was there when they had a 750th birthday or something like that, or 800. Like, I don't know how old the city really is, but there's so much tradition and history. But it's hard to change something like that, right? Yeah. So a lot of people people hold on to it. Yeah. But from the safety aspect, if you think about that, yeah. what's safer than using a, a, a thermal vision or night vision yeah. to hunt a, a species which is obviously causing issues in a yeah. country like Germany? And a, and a country like Germany, a lot of those European countries, y'all, it's they've been around so long, and just pure size reasons, right? So there's 60 million people, 65 million people in Thank Germany. You for that. But it's you know it may be physically the size of yeah. Texas, you yeah. know. So of course, then actually it's not. So Germany fits two and a half times size-wise, like uh, like physical land mass into uh, Texas. So two and a half time, times of Germany fits into Texas. And uh, I'm interested. Um, uh, it's interesting that you bring it up because that's one of the reasons why I how I explain that too. Like if everybody was able to be as as leisurely. Uh, in terms of hunting and fishing in Germany as it is over here, I think there would be no fish left anymore in Germany and they would yeah. probably kill them, kill them, kill each other even more than they already do. Yeah. Because that's one of the, the, um, the arguments we get on like video comments and stuff like that. Whenever we, we hunt open fields and it's, it's not, uh, you know, there's no dense population, it gets pretty wild sometimes, especially within semi-auto or whatever, you can fire a lot of shots, yeah, right? right. Uh, so folks usually, some of them comment on that and then, um, I like to bring up a, a, a statistic I was actually to, to research, which is the likelihood of getting killed in a hunting-related accident in Germany is, is actually higher than it is in the U.S. At least if you look at it from a an, from an hunting license, uh, a licensee or a person who owns a hunting license, if you look at it from that perspective, we have less uh, hunting-related accidents or deaths than they have in Germany. So it's like, and you, you find that pretty so often. So that's probably a product of just geography. Yes, you, know, you, you like, find it yeah. pretty often because there's like roads going by and whatever, and yeah. uh, 
these news articles are not that rare in Germany where somebody just gets killed by driving by somewhere and yeah. just yeah. you know bad things happen. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't see that very often. Over yeah, here. I think the op the acreage you have just in per capita plays a lot on that. You know, yeah. the more people you've got packed in small spaces, your hunting restrictions have to be stricter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for the wildlife. Yeah, but so uh, but yeah, these are. These will start shipping, we hope, towards mid to late February, just as soon as we can get all the components together. But yeah, we've started stockpiling them. So pretty much everything we're showing here at the show, um, we're kind of doing it a little different now. We're, we're only showing stuff that will be produced, or will be new from now through March or April at the latest. Okay. Pulsar will still have a lot of new products stuff to get excited about. Yeah, but some, we'll have some, they'll introduce at IWA in Nuremberg um, in March. Uh, for their European distributors, they'll introduce a couple items there. They'll have new things in the summer and then some new introductions at fall. So with even with all they're doing here new, it's just tip of the iceberg for the year. So yeah, should just get better hopefully. Oh, Chase, I appreciate it, sir. Yeah, no Thank problem. you so much yeah, for the fun. coming by. Yeah, uh, that's it from the Pulsar booth. Uh, a lot of cool new stuff coming, uh, exciting products like the Fabian 2 with the laser rangefinder integrated. So I look forward to that and uh, Hopefully see more from you guys. Yeah, you? perfect guys. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Hey guys, we are the Envision Optics booth. So just continuing our thermal tour, so to speak. But I uh, want to see what you guys have uh, going for 2022. Uh, that's Chris. He's going to cover uh, those products. Good deal, good deal. So this is the latest and greatest right here. This is the Halo XRF. So it's a 50 millimeter lens, uh, 3.5 base mag. So I'll power it up and you can look through it and you know tell us your thoughts. So this has the LRF capability, like I said. Let me make sure I nuke this beforehand. What sensor size is that one? So, so, it, so it's a BAE 640 12 micron. Um, we pride ourselves in the best image quality in the market, but I'll let you do uh, your review as well as far as that's concerned. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So I will toggle on the LRF as well. So right now it's going to be in scanning mode. So it's going to be constantly reading yardage. You can see it in the top right of the display. All right, go ahead and check it out. You can also do single mode where uh, you can point the LRF box to a certain object and it'll read that distance in the top right of that display. So like I said, that is the latest and greatest. You can also stream to a iPhone, Android, or tablet via the Wi-Fi connection in the unit. You can also download videos and photos and all the content that you desire. And um, So you do, get, you do have video recording in this unit or not? Yes, yeah, okay. internal recording, yep. And audio. And audio, yep. I like the uh, thermal image. I would like to see it outside, obviously. It's Absolutely, obviously yeah. different we, we inside. We can only do so much in, in an air-conditioned uh, environment or whatever, exactly, but um, yeah. it does look good. But we got guys all over the map utilizing this. Guys in Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Texas, you know, all sorts of different environments. And they, uh, they rave about the image quality and tend to agree with us on the uh, best image quality in the market. Yep. Um, some of our other scopes, we do have the Halo X models. So this is the Halo XRF, as I said. This is the Halo X35. So these have internal recording as well. They do not have the LRF capability, uh, but same thing, Wi-Fi streaming, iPhone, Android, tablet. Um, so yeah, same setup, same, same batteries. So utilizes two 18650 batteries. Mm -hmm. They're rechargeable. They last about seven to eight hours in terms of runtime. And then as I said, they are uh, rechargeable, so people would certainly enjoy that. Can you plug in a USB-C or something while, while using the unit? Or? Yeah, so there is a USB-C port. Um, this is rated for IP67. So that's one meter of water for up to 30 minutes. So you won't have any problem in inclement weather or anything like that. And then, so this is the, this is the Nox 35. So this is a thermal monocular. So this can, be, this can be helmet mounted or weapon mounted. You can utilize it as a handheld scanner as well. Same color palettes, or excuse me, not color palettes, polarities. So we got white hot, black hot, and a few different edge detects. So this is the edge detect right here. You can cycle through the polarities using this button right here. Mm -hmm. So that is a 2.5 base mag. It's a 35 millimeter lens. And these are all rated up to 50 cal. Yeah, so the edge detect is something that people typically enjoy. Uh, it's not something that they've really seen before, so 
people are pretty impressed and uh, like to utilize that. So I recently acquired a uh, six hour Echo 3, which has to just have the edge, not as good as that one though. So it's more, more um, defined, uh, the contrast is much higher on this one than on the, on the six hour. But the edge, I, I think it's interesting. I would like to see it in a hunting scenario, Out in the field, like yeah. how, how much that does it actually you know, give you an advantage or over black blackout, for example. So yeah, so I mean, people like checking it out. Um, as far as what they typically utilize, I mean, people typically—it's hard to say—but typically stick with the black hot or white hot. You know, it's more uh, mainstream. But you know, you do have those certain instances where the edge detect is beneficial. So, kind of depends on the environment. So this is the Nox 18. So it's the same model. Um, however, it's an 18 millimeter lens, and this is a true 10 base mag. So like I said, helmet mounted, weapon mounted. If you're gonna helmet mount a Nox, typically you'd go with the 1.0 base mag, the 18 millimeter. Um, but yeah, still BAE 12 micron, 640. Same battery setup as well, so about seven to eight hours with the 18 650. This is 1X, is it? Yeah, 1X, yep. It's a very good image. Um, in terms of uh, thermal manufacturers, you see quite a few going to like traditional scope design, right? Whether you have, you know, can use your regular scope rings or whatever. Um, I think there's pros and cons with both directions. Like I actually, I am a fan of the non-traditional design because it's usually more compact and you don't you don't take as much uh, landscape or real estate uh, on the rifle. That right. uh, that um, that matter. What What's your your opinion? Like, I don't see any traditional scope design here. Uh, how do you guys think about that? Like, what what's your opinion about should we go down the traditional scope design route versus keeping it more compact um, and maybe then having to use you know different kind of um, mounting options? Yeah. So as far as that goes, I mean, our primary goal is functionality. Um, obviously, when you add in features such as LRF and internal recording, you have to you know, optimize the space that you have. And that is why, you know, something like the Nox is able to be nice and compact because it doesn't have those added features. However, we still have the same image quality as, you know, some of these scopes, which do have those features. Um, really depends on what people's preferences are and what their usages are. You know, internal recording to some people is make or break. Um, same with LRF. So it really depends on preference, but like I said, it's functionality. Um, People come to us for image quality and usage as far as those features. So hard to speak to the design of the scopes, uh, but I think as time goes on, they're going to be more compressed, not as cumbersome as you know some of these units. Although we try and keep them as light as possible, yeah. and you know as you can see with the Noxes, they're pretty lightweight. You can put them on a helmet, like I said, um, not going to drag you down too much in terms of weight or anything like that, and and keep it nice and nice and compact. I saw you earlier keeping your hand in front of it for the calibration, I'm guessing. You guys don't have an internal shutter or something? It has to be the lens cap or? So on these ones, we do not. We do on the Atlas Thermo Binocular. So that is gonna be an auto nuke. So essentially it's a blade that goes in front of the sensor and it's able to calibrate at that point. However, when you do have an auto nuke, it is automatic. So it doesn't have the capability of doing it at necessarily an optimal time. You know, you could be going for a shot and then you can have a quick reset of the image, which in a certain time and place people right. would be upset about. So for the Atlas Thermo Binocular, it's a binocular, it's used as a scanner. So it wouldn't be as inhibiting as, uh, you know, being a weapon mounted scope, having the auto nuke. But for the Nox, so it's going to be manual nuke and then you have to close the lens cap or no? Yes, yeah, so you need to close the lens cap. I mean, as far as calibration, it certainly depend, depends on the environment. But typically once you start up the scope, you're going to want to calibrate right away to optimize that image. And then some people do it every 10 minutes. Some people calibrate every 30, 40 minutes. Depends on, depends on the weather. Depends on. Depends on the environment. Yeah. Very cool. All right, Chris. I appreciate it. Ronnie, That's it from Envision. Uh, image quality is pretty impressive. Uh, looking through, uh, the edge is uh, is a cool, cool color palette. Uh, would like to kind of see that in the real world scenario how that works and whatnot. But Absolutely. very good. Uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what you guys have coming up in the next few years. And it's going to be an exciting time, yeah. I'll say that. Hopefully those things get smaller and smaller. I think yeah. they will. It's so. headed in that direction. Yeah. So. Awesome. All right.
That's it from Envision, guys. Let's move on. Hey guys, we're at the AGM Global Vision uh, booth. Uh, AGM does a lot of thermal vision, night vision. What else do you guys have? Uh, mainly thermal and night vision. We also do some infrared lasers. Uh, we got our hands in a little bit of everything that has to do with anything night vision related. So, Well, that's Andrew. Andrew, I'm Ronnie. Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, if you could run us through some, some of your new products. Uh, uh, I guess weapon mounted is interesting, handheld is interesting. You guys obviously has, have very cool helmets up here. Um, I'm not sure if my head will fit in there because I have a large head and also the beard is probably pro uh, would be probably pro problematic but yeah um, handheld is good and then what if anything you guys have new so we do a lot of not only weapons mounted thermal but also handheld clip on like I said pretty much anything in that night vision and thermal space you know we're gonna have a unit that'll fit a need for your customers for dealers you know whoever so uh, just gonna hit a few highlights of some of the newer items from AGM uh, first of all is the fusion series uh, this is a digital channel a thermal channel and a layover basically so you'll get a fused image of the digital and the thermal uh, we have these with and without a laser rangefinder this one here is the TM 35 640 with the laser rangefinder and for that you're gonna see these on the shelf for about twenty nine hundred dollars you know so sub three thousand for a 640 and a laser rangefinder you know really hard to beat so it's fired up now and this M button right there those will click through your different channels as well as a few color palettes so very easy to use Uh, we have a couple different models of that, uh, 25 millimeter and 35 millimeter objective lenses in a 384 and a 35 and a 640. And again, you'll find these for around 2,000 to 3,000, just depending on the lens size and the core. That is pretty cool. Oh yeah, they're doing really well for us. Uh, we started shipping those about a month ago, so still a really new, really fresh product. Uh, just starting to get into more dealers' hands, more end users' hands, and the reviews so far have been really positive. Uh, it's an 18650 battery, so it's rechargeable, you know, something that is easily, readily available for people. You can also run this off of a battery pack with a USB-C. So. so in terms of uh, not running this in an external battery pack, what's the battery lifetime on that? Uh, out of the 18650, I mean, you'll get minimum, you know, six hours out of this thing. So quite a bit of time there. Your range finder is good out to about 600 meters. And uh, other than that, like I said, I mean, these are available now. We are shipping them. So, you know, been really good for us. The next item we want to highlight is the Sting IR. This is brand new. This is, uh, you know, just debuted here at SHOT Show on Tuesday. So we do two variations of this unit. We have a 384 and a 640, obviously just to jump up in your resolution as far as you know, a better core in there. They're both 12 micron sensors. So the latest technology on the market is what went into this. The versatility of this unit is really kind of what's making it a winner for us already. Uh, it comes with a Picatinny mount. It's recoil rated for a 5.56. So if somebody does want to, they can throw this on an AR-15, uh, you know, shoot at night. There's a reticle built into it. The main function of this guy here, though, is going to be uh, helmet mounted. So, you know, that's a, a lot more demand in the market coming for a helmet mounted thermal. And uh, this is going to fulfill that. So these are going to retail for about 2800 to 4200 Again, just kind of depending on the core that's inside the unit. No, the nice part about this as well, one CR123 two, two, battery, or you can run it off of the battery pack, like I said, but if you're helmet mounting that, you don't want to do that. You just want to have good battery life. So there is an 18650 battery cap option where you can get, switch back and forth between those batteries and have a better battery life out of it. All of the different mounts, adapters, everything like that comes in a plastic hard case that's sold with these. Everything included, ready to go out of the box. Uh, does it have your standard color palettes like black hot, white hot, and rainbow? And it does, it does. It does have the different color palettes. So all of the features in most of our other thermals are built into this one as well. You know, We're anticipating this one to start shipping around April or so. Uh, and these are definitely going to be one of our best sellers here by the end of the year. What's the weight in that thing? Don't get any ideas. Thank you. So moving on to some of the weapons mounted thermal. Uh, this is another new item. We released it at the end of 2020. This is the Varmint LRF. 
the same cores, uh, same features that were in our you know Rattler series. It's already been doing very well for us. Uh, we wanted to add a laser rangefinder, so you see obviously the housing a little bit different by adding the laser rangefinder into it. And as an integrated laser range uh, rangefinder, there's nothing to plug in. There's no wires, nothing like that. Uh, just a point and shoot with this guy. Some American defense mount comes standard on every single one of these units. You know, save you a couple hundred bucks on a mount. The biggest thing with these, 18650 battery, so better battery life, rechargeable batteries, same deal as well, capable to run off of a battery pack via USB-C connection. This laser rangefinder is going to be good out to about 600 meters. Uh, we do these in 384 and 640 cores as well in a 35 and 50 millimeter housing. What, uh, what are the magnification ranges, I guess? So your, the base mags on your 384, these are great for coyotes, they're great for hogs. Uh, 3X and 4X, basically, for your base mag. Uh, in your 640s, you're looking at a 2 and 2.5, two and you know, so a little bit better field of view there. And, uh, you know, great detection and recognition ranges on these. You know, definitely get out, you know, uh, detection range, you know, definitely past 1,000 yards, no problem at all. As far as your recognition range, what am I actually looking at? Is this a pig, a coyote, you know, dog, whatever? Definitely in that three to five hundred range, just kind of depending on which unit it is. And price points on these guys anywhere from about thirty three hundred up to fifty five hundred. Again, just depending on the resolution and the lens size. Is that the newest? This is the newest item that we have out now. So this is the Adder series. Obviously very different from the others that we have, different from the ones that we just looked at. This isn't a daytime rifle scope housing. Still a thermal night vision rifle scope. It's just a little bit different housing. So now uh, if you have a bolt action rifle, something like that, proprietary rings, anything like that, 30 millimeter tube, drop right in. So you want to use a cantilever QD mount, great. You want to use your same old rings that you've had for years, great. Anything that, uh, that you have, this thing is very easy to mount so obviously great for bolt guns you get a proper eye relief which is always a struggle with some other optics also great on an AR-15 platform AR-10 anything like that uh, this does have audio video recording a shot activated recoil uh, another big feature with this guy is going to be two internal 18650 batteries so you can charge this unit and run it just off of the internal charge or there's an external CR123 battery that you can use with it as well where do you charge that uh, internal? Is it a USB-C or what is it? So it's a USB-C that's right under here. It screws off just like a regular daytime turret and back on. Your CR123 battery, same deal. Like a regular turret, screw off right back on. And your menu wheel over here, this will uh, control your zoom and you can open up the menu with just a push of the button. We anticipate these scopes to start shipping around the second quarter of this year. We're gonna have those in dealers' hands by then. Uh, we also plan to continue our partnership with American Defense. Obviously, this isn't going to run off of a proprietary mount, so we're anticipating these shipping with a 30 millimeter cantilever mount from ADM. Maintaining a three year warranty across all items. How do you get the, the videos off USB-C as a SD card? Yeah, you can use a USB-C to pull them off directly. We also have an app that you can view videos in as well. We have four different variations of it, uh, 384 or 640 resolution and a 35 and 50 millimeter objective lens size within those two. Our retail price points on these, 2,500 to 4,500. Uh, biggest thing with these, um, you know, obviously the price points are great, but the availability is better, so. Well, that's it from the AGM booth. Um, Pretty excited product, um, kind of like following the, the trend with other manufacturers at this point with the traditional design. I think there's, there's pros and cons to traditional design versus compact. I'm actually, I'm pretty neutral. I like both. There's, right. like I said, pros and cons to both of them. But uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Andrew, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you guys for coming by. Uh, AGMGlobalVision.com to see our entire product list. Our phone number's on there too. Give us a shout, shoot us an email, and we're ready to hear from you. And any support you guys need, you know, you know where to find us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.